Here's Victoria and Anthony with an AMI This Week Shortcut. Anthony, can you name something that weighs more than 500 elephants? Um, not the type of question I was expecting, but okay. Uh, how about the Empire State Building? Well, funny you should say that because the new Royal Alberta Museum in Edmonton not only weighs more than 500 elephants, but it was built with limestone from the quarry that was used to build the Empire State Building, and it contains enough concrete to fill seven Olympic-sized swimming pools. Wow, if there's so much to learn about the outside of the building itself, I hope we're going to learn a little bit about what's inside. We sure are. On its opening days, over 40,000 people walked through its doors, including Edmonton's Alex Smythe. Let's check it out. There is a great excitement as the mammoths are unveiled at the grand opening of the Royal Alberta Museum. Executive Director Chris Robinson tells us more about their great reveal. Well, the mammoth has been the museum's logo, its icon, for, you know, for countless years. So we've made two life-size bronze mammoths for our lobby, a mother and her juvenile. And rather than a traditional ribbon cutting at opening day, we had actually wrapped it in a drape. And then uh, the premier, and a whole whack of little kids pressed the button and the drape dropped instantly and our mammoths were revealed. We have 82,000 square feet of exhibition space. Well, it's the biggest museum in Western Canada. We are actually a full spectrum of curatorial programs, A to Z, archaeology to zoology, so human history and natural history. We had the opportunity to tell hundreds of stories about Alberta. Some of these stories include dinosaurs, the Ice Age, mammals currently found in Alberta, military and Western history, and indigenous culture. Some of the museum's accessible features include a high contrast staircase, accessible washrooms with signs marked in braille, multimedia audio visual displays, and it also pays tribute to Alberta's languages. We wanted to ensure that all of our interpretation was French, and English, and also indigenous languages are used as well. So I think we've widened our scope of, of audiences who might appreciate the place. It's not just for adults to learn. The children's room in the museum provides an interactive play space where kids can learn about Alberta too. Everything from the inner workings of a grain elevator to the different types of trees found in our province. It even offers accessibility for wheelchair users and special accessible toys like blocks with sign language and braille. I am Nancy Nicholson. I'm the Family Program Coordinator here at the Royal Alberta Museum. Sensory Sunday is a uh, special early morning uh, for families with uh, sensory processing differences. We're hoping to create a quiet space somewhere in the museum, so making the lighting a little bit darker, maybe having some mats and things like that, so that if, uh, if visitors need that sort of time to kind of chill out and get away from the galleries, they can. One in 66 people have autism in Canada, so recognizing that not all families can afford to buy sunglasses or things to cover their ears or fidgets, any of that, that kind of thing. So we basically built a kit that has some of those things in it. Although the children's gallery is a dedicated space for kids to explore and have fun, the whole museum is an eye-opening learning experience. I heard a lot of wows. In fact, a little boy looked at our Edmontosaurus and his jaw dropped. And the little boy and me couldn't wait to get to the live bug gallery. I made a special stop to visit Pete Hewley, the live animal supervisor. I think the biggest question here is why bugs? You know, people don't tend to have very healthy attitudes towards invertebrates. This is 97% of the animal kingdom, and only 3% of animals actually have backbones. But we want to try to showcase that other 97% of the animal kingdom and hopefully foster some respect, tolerance, and appreciation in people. How does the Royal Alberta Museum work with the CNIB? Uh, we have an annual event called Sensory Safari where we partner with the CNIB and the Northern Alberta chapter of the International Safari Club and we provide a whole bunch of different specimens that people are allowed to touch. My job of course is to bring the live animals for that so we're very careful about what we bring out uh, and make sure that people can still have that kind of tactile experience. Normally when you come to a museum you're not allowed to touch the things um, but we make sure that that's, that's a possibility for that particular event. I was lucky enough to hold a tarantula and a millipede, but I feel my trip to the Royal Alberta Museum barely scratched the surface in what they have to offer. I'll definitely be back to explore more of my Alberta. <laughs>